So, what is gold? So gold is both an element and a mineral. It's one of those minerals that has just a single element in it, which is gold, AU. So gold on Earth is rare, valued, and extraterrestrial, having um, originated in star explosions and brought to Earth via bombardment of asteroids about 4 billion years ago. So with time, gold has been concentrated within the Earth's crust via different geological, biological, physical, and chemical processes, um, and these locally form what we call ore deposits. So why is gold valuable? Well, since ancient time, gold has been sought after, um, both for its beauty, store wealth, and its durable nature. For example, gold is resistant and doesn't tarnish and can be flattened to fractions of millimeters thick. It's also an excellent conductor of electricity and can be used for multiple industrial applications. 50% of the gold in the world is used as decorative artifacts or jewelry. About 35% is used for currency. And about 15% is used for industrial applications. So gold occurs in a wide variety of what we call ore deposits. These can either be primary ore deposits or secondary deposits. So primary ore deposits, so this would be like your 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 load gold deposits, so gold in like quartz veins and in minerals and rocks in the earth. And the second one is secondary deposits. So this is like your plastic gold deposits where you have gold concentrated in sand or riverbeds and you pan for it. Gold in all ore deposits is typically in the form of native gold or electrum, which is an alloy of gold and silver with like a little bit of copper. Gold can also form in the microstructure or as small nano inclusions within other minerals like pyrite. So pyrite is actually known as fool's gold, it kind of looks like gold, but it has a different shape and structure, d definitely different than gold. So gold just have quite a variety of different names to classification for these gold deposits, which can get quite a bit confusing. For example, some of the ones that are associated with magmatic hydrothermal processes are like porphyry gold deposits, epithermal, low sulfidation gold deposits, um, there are things like syn depositional gold deposits and metamorphic terrains and greenstone belts, these are what we call Orogenic gold low deposits. There's quite a bit of a list, um, which you can read. I'll put it on the screen so you can read it. You can also see this link to this blog post where I explain it a bit more in better detail. So, the other types, secondary ore deposits, these are what most prospectors look for. Um, the most common, um, well known one is called plaster gold. So, plaster gold, think about the old gold miners, the Pampas, the American gold rush, right? This forms due to gold in primary ore deposits being exposed to the atmosphere and all the elements. So official processes like wind and water and rain will break down the rocks that host the gold. And because gold is so resilient, heavy, and virtually indestructible, it will eventually be transported and accumulate and concentrate in an area like a riverbed. So gold is very, very dense. That's why it sinks and accumulates in these channels and these place or gold deposits, the secondary ore deposits. Giant gold nuggets are a form of secondary gold deposits. In fact, the largest one in the world was discovered in Australia in 1869, and it actually has a name. It's called the Welcome Stranger. It's, I think, around 2,130 troy ounces. I think it's 2,136 troy ounces. And considering today's price of gold, I think it's going to be worth about 3 million US dollars. So that's quite a bit for a single piece of gold. So now you may ask, how does gold actually form? So remember how gold is already in the earth? Well, it just needs to be concentrated. So gold in primary ore deposits is concentrated and transported as a dissolved species in hot fluids. So fluids being liquid vapor or supercritical fluid. Um, and these are known as hydrothermal fluids. These hydrothermal fluids could be heated groundwater or another source of fluid within the Earth's crust. So gold is very, very tough to dissolve, but it can be in a strong acid, such as something known as ocarigia, which is hydrochloric acid, nitric nitric acid. Um, ocarigia is actually called royal water in Latin or something. This process oxidizes the gold, making it available for complexing with ions and ligands such as sulfur, chlorine, and cyanide, um, thus forming species with gold. Or possibly complexing with organic and inorganic materials such as microorganisms or hydrocarbons like bitumen. The ligands and ions gold will complex with depends on the conditions of the transporting hydrofluid, and this could be oxidation states, uh, salinity, uh, pH, temperature, etc. So now we know how gold is transported, but what next? Well, it needs to be deposited somewhere in a trap. Because we know how gold is dissolved and transported, we can apply the reverse conditions to how it is undissolved, basically how it is deposited. So for example, if we decrease the ions or ligands or oxidation states, or we increase the pH, 
and gold will precipitate. So this will be done by process such as boiling, sulfidation, forming the iron and sulfur bearing mineral pyrite, oxidation, which could be mixing with more oxygenated meteoric water, or cooling. So, for example, if there's a sudden pressure drop and boiling of the hydrothermal fluid that's carrying the gold, it will lower the HS and then it will eventually deposit gold. So gold can also be absorbed onto minerals with positive surface charges like arsenic-rich pyrite. It may seem a bit confusing, and that's because it kind of is a bit confusing, and even scientists still don't understand how gold is transported and deposited in all these different conditions. So how do you find gold deposits? Well, that's essentially what exploration geologists and prospectors do. We look for our primary or secondary gold deposits. Um, with the former, exploration geologists, which is what I am, um, look for more primary ore deposits, whereas um, prospectors will also look for primary, but more likely to look for the secondary ore deposits with the placer gold. So there's lots of things to consider when you look for ore deposits, like particularly in primary ore deposits. You want to think on the global scale, so what were the geodynamic processes um, way back when in Earth's history um, that would have been applicable when this area was possibly forming gold. Um, to a local scale, like evidence of hydrothermal fluids um, reacting with the rocks around it that would alter different minerals. And I won't go into too much detail about this because it's quite a rabbit hole. So it's basically a combination of new and old techniques and technology, um, as well as different branches of geoscience, like geophysics, geochemistry, etc. Anyways, hope you enjoyed my video about what gold is. Wish I had like a big gold nugget to show in the video, but you know, not yet. <laughs> Anyways, if you want to learn more, check out the blog post. Um, and yeah, thanks for watching. Bye.